If you've been learning Chinese for a while, you've probably experienced the ebbs and flows of Chinese study, right? I definitely have. You know, you get that burst of motivation because of some inspiring video you saw or some new app, study technique, or friendly tutor you found, and you start studying really hard. Then, weeks or months later, whether it's because life just gets in the way or you get bored or you simply get distracted and lose sight of the goal, you wake up to find that motivation isn't there anymore. Then after a few more days, weeks, months, even years for some people, you decide to get back on the horse and you end up starting the cycle all over again. There's no getting around the fact that if you actually want to get good at Chinese and speak with a decent level of fluency, that's going to take some significant time investment. And if you're a native English speaker, it's going to take a bit longer than it would take for, say, Spanish. You're looking at around about a thousand hours for B2 level fluency if you follow the methods that we outline in our courses and in our YouTube videos. And even after you get to that point, you're not just going to stop. It's a lifelong skill that you're going to develop. So therefore, the most important thing when it comes to acquiring Chinese or any language really is not having necessarily the best methods, although that does help a lot. It's sticking to it, showing up every day and putting some time in consistently. Now, if you can train yourself to show up every day and put time in and you have amazing methods for acquiring Chinese, your success is literally a certainty. There's no way you're not going to get good at this language. So in today's video, I'm going to give you my best pieces of advice for sticking with Chinese and making it as addictive as playing a video game or even as automatic as brushing your teeth. Before we jump into this, I want to share you a quick story about myself and my own journey with acquiring Chinese to a very high level. I started learning Chinese technically when I was 19 years old. I was always obsessed with martial arts throughout my teens and for my gap year, I decided to take a trip to China when all my friends were going and getting drunk in Europe. And before I went, I spent about half an hour to 60 minutes a day using a program called Pimsla, which is essentially just listening and repeating Chinese phrases over and over again. I did this for about 100 hours and the results were incredible. Not because Pimsleur is this amazing program necessarily, it's just that because of all the repeating and listening and repeating and listening to real Chinese over and over again, I developed very powerful pronunciation skills that just made my trip to China so much better than it would have been otherwise. So I spent two months in China, I didn't really want to come back, but I did and I went to university and then I got a job for a year or two and I kind of forgot about my whole China journey. Then in around 2013, I saved up a bunch of money and came back to China and I've been here pretty much ever since. Now from 2013 to now, which is almost 10 years, I certainly have not been consistently learning Chinese. And that is the point of this story. I'm okay at Chinese. I would say I speak with an advanced level of fluency, especially on a good day, somewhere between B2 and C1 fluency. But my skills today could be so much better. Who knows, I might even be one of the best Mandarin speakers in the world, but I'm not. And the reason is because I did not stick to my study consistently, even after I started Mandarin Blueprint with my friend and co-founder, Phil Crimmins. My first year with Chinese was kind of a nightmare and I didn't really hit my stride until at least a year in, maybe a year and a half in, and I made incredible progress as soon as I started understanding the idea of comprehensible input. And I started immersing in Chinese. I learned how to read. I learned 3,000 characters and I was just reading and listening every single day. This is about where I met Phil and we started studying together and sharing notes and ideas about how to improve faster at Chinese. And after just two years of study, we both passed the HSK 6 exam, which was the highest level exam at the time. It was then that we got the drive to start teaching people what we knew about how to learn Chinese, because we noticed that all of our friends and classmates were still struggling severely with the language, just like we were, or even worse. So we started this business together, whilst also trying to maintain our level of Chinese and improve further through immersion. It took us around five years total working full time, both of us, seven days a week, now around six and a half days a week. And just building the courses was one of the hardest things we've ever done in our lives. And trying to figure out how to get the course to people and sell it online was a whole nother skill set that we had to build that was just as difficult, if not more difficult, than acquiring Chinese to fluency. Along the way, I chose to build a family. I've had two children since then. The difficulty of this has been life-changing. Around about 2015, 2016, we both chose to kind of focus more on the business and less on our Mandarin study and let our study time per day go down from like two to three hours to maybe 20, 30 minutes tops. And even that time was spent for me mainly just reading before bed each night. 
Now, of course, we were still living in China and we were using it daily. And I am married to a Chinese woman, so of course I would still have conversations and things like that, and I would maintain my level, but we weren't really progressing because of the way our habits had changed. I would occasionally get on an immersion kick or maybe I would hire a tutor for a few hours and things like that because I wanted to vastly improve my Chinese. But then I would inevitably get overwhelmed by work, family or something else that would come up in my life and I would allow my Chinese to go back into what I call maintenance mode where I wasn't progressing, I was just staying at my level and making sure I didn't tui bu, just get worse at Chinese. And then around 2021, I had a call with the client, which we often did back then just to get feedback on the course and see how they're enjoying it, see if there's anything we can improve on. And at the end of the call, this person asked me to translate something for them. And I said, sure. And he gave me a rather complicated piece of English that I didn't really understand that well in English, to be honest. English wasn't his first language. But still, I got the idea of it in English and I realized that I couldn't just translate it on the fly. Now, translating is really tough, but still it's like, hang on a minute, what year is this? 2021, I've been learning Chinese since 2013, technically, but I can't do this very well at all. It was still a huge wake up call saying to me, hey, you need to work better at this because your Chinese needs to be awesome if you wanna try and train people on how to speak Chinese, right? It needs to be one of the best. So I made a decision right then and there that I would improve my Chinese significantly. And that even though I was way busier than I was when I first started learning Chinese, I was going to get back to that level of immersion or something close to it every single day. I started reading more and more about how to actually create habits and apply what I learned to my Chinese study. And it worked really, really well. By using some of the tools and applying the techniques around habits that I'm gonna share with you today, I have managed to squeeze in almost 900 hours of immersion in around 10 months. That's just under three hours a day on average of listening or watching or reading some form of Chinese content. I feel like my fluency, my ability to communicate, my ability to comprehend Chinese have improved threefold since that fateful day in 2021. And my life this past year has been busier than it's ever been before. I'm super happy with those results, of course, but Every now and then I do wonder, what would my Chinese skill be like today if I had kept consistent with my study throughout the entire time? From 2013 all the way to right now. And I don't want you to have those same regrets. I want you to be able to stick with your Chinese study consistently, even if it's just a relatively small amount per day, that consistent time investment compounds over the months and the years that you spend with Chinese. And you get some pretty insane results from that. So without further ado, let's get into my first piece of advice regarding building habits. Build habits around who you want to become, not what you want to achieve. This idea is straight out of James Clear's Atomic Habits book. I'm not sure if he was the first one to come up with this or not, but the idea just kind of blew me away when I read about it. So for example, if you're someone who wants to lose 20 pounds and you focus all of your energy around that outcome, that goal, but after that goal is achieved, it's very likely that you'll put the weight back on because you haven't changed your processes too much or the way you live your life or who you are. And the same goes for Chinese. So for example, if you say, oh, I want to learn a thousand words or I want to have a conversation in Chinese easily, or I want to pass an HSK exam, it's very likely that once you've achieved those goals, you kind of become a little lost and your study can sort of go off a cliff. Now, while I think having goals is really nice and I think it's also quite effective to write your goals down every day and see them somewhere every day to keep you focused on it, having the goals is not gonna make you reach the goal. Having a process in place to make sure you show up and put something towards those goals each and every day or throughout each day is what's gonna to lead to your success. And if you really want to have success, you don't focus on the processes themselves, you go on a slightly deeper level and you focus on who you wish to become. So right now you are not learning Chinese or your goal is not to learn Chinese or to become fluent in Chinese. You are a Chinese learner, or I prefer the term acquirer. In fact, even better terms are Chinese fanatic or Chinese enthusiast. You're one of these identities, or you're at least trying to become one of them. And every time you show up to do something with Chinese, you learn a character, you review your flashcards, you listen to a Chinese podcast, you consume and sentence mine a Chinese TV show. Every time you do one of these things, you are casting a vote for that identity. With enough consistency, you actually become that new identity. And at that point, you won't necessarily need some of the tools and techniques that I'm gonna share with you today. You will just show up 
to learn Chinese or acquire Chinese because it feels good to be you. So my friend Phil, for example, Mandarin Blueprint co-founder, he is obsessed with exercise. He has been for many years now. He exercises every single day, okay? So he goes to the gym or he runs, he does something that moves his body and gets him tired. And because his habit is so ingrained and his identity is that of an athlete, if he goes even one day without exercise, he misses it. He feels odd without it. And I feel the same about Chinese. So what I recommend you do is you decide right now that you are going to become this new identity. You are going to become a Chinese acquirer or fanatic or enthusiast. And you're going to every day show up a little bit to cast a vote for that new identity. But please don't put some crazy pressure on yourself to fully immerse in Chinese at all times. And if you watch one YouTube video in English or listen to one podcast that you like that's not Chinese, that you are failing in some way. Remember, to win an election, you only need the majority vote. You don't need 99.9% .9 or even 100% of the votes. You just need 51%. So if you mess up, if you skip a day here or there, it's okay as long as you have the majority vote. So there are a bunch of habit books out there and they're based on similar research and they kind of say similar things. The one I personally prefer is Atomic Habits, but there's a ton of other ones like The Power of Habits, for example, that are also really good. But I'm going to base today's framework and a lot of the tips from Atomic Habits. So to start building this new identity, we need to build processes that make sure that you show up and cast votes. And the best way to do that is to focus on four different things that cause habits to form. The first element is cue, where you must make the habit obvious. The second is craving, where you have to make it attractive and actually desirable to do. The third one is response, where you actually make it easy to do and as frictionless as possible. So finally, reward. You want to make it satisfying so that you come back and start the loop again. So these first three steps are all about doing the thing. And then the fourth step is about doing the thing next time. So let's start with Q, how to make Chinese obvious. Well, the best way to start with this is to do what we call a personal routine audit. This is where you write down pretty much everything you do habitually throughout each day and each week. Now to actually do this fully, might take you a full week because you have to be present in the moment. Because there's a lot of habits that you have that you might not even remember or know about. You just do them. This could be as small as opening the curtains and windows in the morning, having your morning coffee, having breakfast, taking your kids to school. Just write down everything that you do weekly or daily. And then the second step to this is to categorize them as good, bad, or neutral. And how do you decide if an activity is good or bad or neutral? Well, you just ask yourself this question. Does this kind of behavior help me become the type of person I need to be to acquire Chinese to fluency. So something I would label as a bad habit would be excessive binging of Netflix in my native language. Now, if you were trying to lose weight, eating a huge cake might be a bad habit, but it's kind of neutral when it comes to learning Chinese overall, as long as it's not happening like three times a day. So biting your nails, on the other hand, is, is technically a bad habit overall, and that's something that I'm fighting myself. I mean, you can acquire Chinese to fluency and bite your nails. It's not really gonna affect it that much. Now, this is not to completely get rid of any bad habits you have. It's not to be harsh on yourself and make this whole thing boring and scary. This is more about just becoming aware at first of what you are doing every day because most of us aren't aware. We just sort of go through life on autopilot. Everyone does it. We have this thing called automaticity with habits where if we do stuff enough with enough repetition, eventually we don't have to think about it. And it's a great thing to have. I'm very grateful for it. But it can lead to us just sort of coasting through life, not really thinking about what we're doing. So once you've got all your habits and you've labeled them as good or bad or neutral, you wanna try and focus on replacing the bad habits with something positive. So if you do Netflix binge a bit too often or you play a bunch of computer games in your native language, you might wanna replace that with Chinese content or a Chinese video game. My next tip for you in terms of making Chinese more obvious to you is to use this habit building formula, which applies a place and a time to the habits that you need to form. So for example, I will learn characters at 1 p.m. in my study, or I will review my flashcards for 20 minutes at 8 a.m. on my balcony, or I will watch an entire TV show at 8 p.m. with my wife in the living room. So as you noted, I also added a time limit to some of those, and I added a person as well. 
So the more details you add, the more likely you are to do the habit because it's more concrete and more specific. So you can just go ahead and create a list of those. And if you are wondering what you actually need to do to acquire Chinese, it's kind of less than you think. And it does also kind of depend if you have access to our course, the Mandarin Blueprint Method, because that kind of lumps a bunch of stuff into one. <laughs> So for example, we take care of pronunciation, Chinese characters, learning words, all of your flashcards are made for you. And you also have a ton of graded reading material. So if you're not on our course, you're gonna be making those all as separate habits. But if you are on our course, they can all just be lumped together as do MB method lessons. And this will be in the category of study, which basically just means learning Chinese characters, pronunciation, your base vocabulary, building a foundation that allows you to immerse and speak the language. And also included in this is creating flashcards, which you'll need to do a little bit later, as well as review flashcards. And then there's immersion activities, which are just watching stuff, reading stuff, and listening to stuff in Chinese. That's where the majority of your time with Chinese will be spent. Finally, you have output practice, speaking and possibly writing. So that includes pronunciation practice, speaking practice, writing practice. Pronunciation and speaking practice I treat as separately, even though they can be combined occasionally. So that could be two or three different habits that you need to develop there. Now, if you already have 3,000 characters, you're already a rather advanced person. You're just gonna be focused on these two categories, immersion and output. But if you haven't got to 3,000 characters yet and you can't really communicate that well in the language and your comprehension of the language is also not that great, you're going to be mainly focused on the study section and the immersion sections with a little bit of output practice as well thrown in if you want. There's not much point in focusing heavily on speaking until your comprehension is really solid. So there you go. Those are the at least nine things you'll need to do to become awesome at Chinese. So it's just about weaving those into your daily life. And a great way of doing that is to use a technique called habit stacking. So it's very similar to the formula that we learned earlier, except this time you're attaching the new habit onto a habit you've already formed, and this makes this new habit easier and much more likely to get done. So for example, after the gym, I will immerse in a Mandarin Blueprint Method article, so a graded reading thing that you unlock at some point in the course. After I make my first cup of coffee, I will finish my flashcard reviews for the day. So based on your level, write down some formulas with some activities that you need to do to get better at Chinese right now and start doing them every single day. My next big tip for you in relation to making Chinese obvious in your life is to redesign your environment. The best way to become disciplined is not to wish you're more disciplined, but just to create a more disciplined environment. So you can just make small changes at home or at work that make Chinese jump out at you and remind you, hey, this is your identity. You're doing this today, right? So you could put Chinese posters on your wall. You could rearrange the apps on the first page of your phone to make sure that they are only Chinese related. You could put Chinese books in your study or by your bedside table or by the toilet. You can even have your formulas written out with all of your daily Chinese related goals as a wallpaper on your laptop. You could also have a separate device for learning Chinese that's always playing something. So if you follow our immersion guide in this video right here, we teach you how to develop that passive playlist. So you'll always have something playing either on your phone or a separate little speaker, even if it's a very low volume, but it's constantly going and reminding you of what identity you're trying to work towards. So my next piece of advice is related to the second aspect of habit building, which is craving. You wanna try and make those different activities that you need to do to get better at Chinese cause a release of dopamine in your bloodstream that actually makes you act on it. And a really great way to do that is to use this third habit building formula. After the current habit that I already have, I will do a habit that I need to do, which will be Chinese related. And then after I do that habit that I need to do, I will do a habit I want to do. So for example, after I have my morning coffee as a current habit, I will do my flashcards for the day. That's a habit I need to do, but might not necessarily be ingrained in me yet that I want to develop. Then after I do my flashcard reviews, I will watch one YouTube video or listen to 10 minutes of my favorite movie slash TV show. So that makes doing the habit more attractive because you know you're gonna get to do a more relaxed, fun habit afterwards. Another great tip for you to make acquiring Chinese more attractive is to use visualization. I don't know why this works, but when you visualize yourself doing the habit that maybe you're feeling some sort of resistance to, it makes it easier to do. It's almost like you've kickstarted the process by doing it mentally. Now all you have to do is just make your body follow through and do it physically. And the vital part about this is not just to imagine every step of the actual habit itself, 
but to imagine how you're going to feel afterwards once you've done it. So for example, if you want to watch a Chinese TV show and create flashcards from it, there's some work involved in that. And also Chinese TV might not be as fun or enthralling as watching Yellowstone or Game of Thrones. But if you spend just a few seconds visualizing yourself going through the steps of watching the TV show, making the flashcards, and also becoming noticeably better at Chinese with all the cool words you're about to learn, it will kickstart that and make it easier to get going. Another great tip for you to make Chinese more attractive is to use the phrase, I get to. So language acquisition today is without a doubt easier, more fun than it has ever been because of all the technology that's available and the sheer amount of content that is available for you to consume. And it's a, it's a great practice every now and then when you start to feel, oh, I can't be bothered to do X. Just think how great we have it right now. We can just turn on a Chinese TV show and we have tools like Megaku and Anki and the Mandarin Blueprint Method to help us immerse and consume Chinese easier and whilst having more fun than ever before. It's really great and we're really lucky. So I think it's a good idea to add the phrase I get to instead of I will to your habit formulas. Another very powerful idea is to join a community. We run a forum ourselves at Mandarin Blueprint called the MB Community, and it's a very warm, lively place with lots of great people, and people help each other out as well as get support from us personally. But there's lots of other places on the internet that you can find communities. I really like the community over there at Refold. I think there's a few good subreddits on reddit.com that you can go check out as well. Chinese forums can be really cool. Join these places and share content share jokes, share resources, help other people out who need help. Find a place where you can fit in and then stand out. A place where you can say, we are Chinese enthusiasts. My next piece of wisdom for you regarding building habits is related to the third factor of developing great habits, which is response, making them easy. So basically, we're just trying to reduce the friction. So building strong habits is about repetition in the beginning. You just need to get those reps in so that you can develop this new identity. And as your repetitions increase, your automaticity of the habit also increases. And as your automaticity increases, the amount that your habit is affected by your emotions and your environment decreases. So I think one of the most effective things you can do to make Chinese easier to do is to prime your environment. So this is very closely related to putting cues in your environment, but it's more about making it easier to get started than it is about reminding you to get started. So for example, if you like to do your flashcards in the morning, which I think most people should because it's a pretty intensive activity and it's very important and most people are more active in the morning, it might be a good idea to actually open your laptop so that it's there waiting for you, open, ready to go with the app open and the first flashcard ready as soon as you get up in the morning. And I know looking at screens first thing in the morning is not ideal, but I'm just giving you an idea here. Another very important thing you can do to prime your environment is to make sure that you not only have your apps on the front page, which again is more about cues than it is about making things easy, you actually have chosen beforehand what you're going to listen to. And you have several choices in case you're not in the mood for one. And the reason why this is so important is that if you don't have several things ready to go at a moment's notice, if you get tired of one piece of material, you don't feel like it, it's not attractive to you and you don't have anything else to replace it, well, that means that you have friction now because you have to go and look for another piece of content, whether that's TV or that's a book or whatever it is. And that friction might cause you to say, eh, I'll do it later. So do things like manage your passive playlist or your YouTube playlist. Have a YouTube channel just for Chinese that you have open, ready to go. You've already prepared a playlist of material that you can listen to at any time that is both comprehensible and compelling. If you spend the time to do this, say at the end of each day, that's another habit you could form by the way, then you're really going to feel the benefit of that over time. Always be exploring new content to make sure that you have a diverse range of stuff at your fingertips. So for example, you might think to yourself, oh, I liked Harry Potter as a kid. I'm going to purchase those books and have them ready to go. Or I'm going to look for the dubbed version of one of the movies and save that to my playlist. Another great idea that makes doing Chinese easier is to use the two minute rule. So this is essentially just making a two minute version of the habit that you want to create and making that your habit. So once you've done that, you have officially finished that habit for the day. So as an example, instead of saying after the gym, I'm going to finish all my flashcards, you say after the gym, 
I'm going to do two minutes of flashcards. Now, what will inevitably happen is that after those two minutes are up, you will naturally just keep going and often you could just finish them all. But the point is you're telling your brain, this is a tiny thing and we can do this, it's easy. The biggest reason why people procrastinate on things is because they see it as too big. They see it as this gargantuan task of learn Chinese, but don't do that. Don't make it into this big thing just make it a very tiny thing and it will get done. And if you ever think to yourself, oh, I can't be bothered to do that, that's too big, just keep slicing and dicing. Cut it in half and then if you still can't be bothered to do it, cut it in half again and keep cutting and cutting and cutting until it's like embarrassing not to be able to do it. Remember, showing up just for only one minute or two minutes is going to cast a vote for that new identity. Remember to forget about your goal, whatever that is, and just focus on getting the reps in. Remember these things compound over time. If you improve by just 1% each and every day, in just a year, you'll be 37 times better than you are now. So go ahead and create your minimum for all the different tasks you need to do. Is it one character? Is it two minutes of immersion? Is it one lesson of the MB course, whatever it is? Just make it so small that it's embarrassing if you don't do it. <laughs> Once you show up and you start doing it and you finish that little minimum, you will inevitably do more anyway. My next piece of advice for you is to do with the final element of building unbreakable habits for acquiring Chinese or anything really, and that is to make it satisfying. It's vital to reward your behavior in some way so that you come back and continue the habit loop again. Remember the first three elements, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, are about doing the habit this time and making it rewarding is about doing the habit next time. So give yourself some kind of reward that makes sure this habit gets done again and again and again. But when thinking about what rewards to give yourself, try not to make them detrimental towards study. So for example, excessive junk food or alcohol will slow you down and not really make you very good at studying for a while. Excessive native language content, like doing a Netflix binge for three hours because you watched one episode of something in Chinese. Staying up late to do some sort of social activity. This is not ideal because then you won't be able to study that well the next day. I'm not saying never do any of this stuff. I'm just saying it's not a good habitual sort of reward to give yourself. A great reward on the other hand would be something like a nice walk and you can actually fit in some immersion hours <laughs> whilst you're walking. Something that you buy for yourself that's also relevant to your study. So for example, a nice new pair of noise canceling earphones, a new subscription for some sort of immersion app. You could also pay for some italki credits, you get the idea. And remember as well, you won't have to do this reward thing forever. Once the habit becomes a part of your identity, doing the habit itself becomes the reward. But this is just a fantastic way of making sure you show up to do the habit each day before it becomes a part of you. Another amazing thing that you can do to make your habits rewarding is to use some kind of habit tracker. This is something that I do every single day. I use an app personally, but you can just use a calendar, a whiteboard, or a journal of some kind made specifically for habit building. Now, how much detail you go into with this depends totally on your personality. You could be someone who is obsessive about details and you really find it satisfying to note down everything. I'm kind of more on this side of the spectrum. But on the other hand, some of you might just hate the idea of doing that and prefer to just keep it simple by ticking things off. I have this habit tracking app which has a little timer and that's what I've used to track my immersion hours for the past almost year now. Now the reason I personally love doing this is because it gives me tons of data. It's not only satisfying on a daily basis just to say, ah, I've ticked that off and I've ticked that off and I've done exactly this much immersion and I've kept up with my habits. It's also great to build up this level of data so that you can review it on a weekly, monthly, even annual basis. The great thing about habit trackers as well is that they tick a bunch of boxes. They don't just make Chinese satisfying and rewarding, they also make it obvious because it's an app on your phone or it's a calendar on your desk. Tracking your habits also makes Chinese more attractive because you really just don't wanna break that streak and that just keeps you going. It makes sure the habit loop keeps repeating. So what if you do break a streak? What if you do have a day where you miss your goals completely? Well, there's only two rules that you need to follow. Number one, never have a zero day. So never have a day with Chinese where you don't do anything towards your skill. So for example, you might get to the end of your day and you're super tired, you've had a crazy day and you realize that you haven't done anything. You haven't learned a character, you haven't reviewed a flashcard, you haven't listened or watched or read anything in Chinese. Guess what you do? 
before you go to bed, you do one. Just do one. It could be anything. It could be say one sentence in Chinese. Listen to one sentence in Chinese. Review one flashcard. Just do one of something before you go to bed and you have not had a zero day. And the second rule to follow is never miss twice. So let's say you set yourself the daily minimum goal of learn three characters, finish your flashcard reviews, and also let's say immerse for 15 minutes. And you don't hit all of those goals, just draw a line, start again, and make sure 100% you do not miss the second day. Because as soon as you do miss twice in a row, that is officially a pattern. That is a new habit you are forming. And my final tip for you regarding building habits for acquiring Chinese is to review and refine. Do you remember where I said earlier on in the video that your brain just naturally gets used to things and creates automaticity in everything we do? I think it's fair to say that the most important aspect about this whole habit building thing is the identity aspect. Make sure that you're building towards that new identity. But the problem is once we've got this new identity because of all the hard work we've put in showing up every day and doing this, what can often happen is you cling to that identity and you don't want to change any further. When a habit becomes formed and it's very strong, like showing up and immersing in Chinese every day, for example, we naturally make it automatic. The automaticity of that habit also increases. Now that's really good. Obviously we want that in some way, but it can be bad in another way when combined with the idea that we like to also cling and be very protective of our identity. So if you don't regularly review your habits and try to maybe tweak them or refine them to improve them in some way, then this can actually harm your progress over the long term. So for example, if you finally get into an immersion habit and you notice your ability to comprehend and produce the language improving, you might get so involved in this that you forget that there's other stuff you need to do to hone your Chinese skill and improve to that next level. So for example, shadowing practice or speaking practice with a tutor, adding that new habit in, doing pronunciation or tone drills of some kind. Basically, because you start getting good at one thing, you will forget about your weaknesses and just focus on that thing you're good at. But the reality is, if you really want to excel at Chinese or any skill, you need to focus on what you're bad at or what you're weak at, as well as what you're good at. So I highly recommend that whilst you're building up all these new habits and sticking with them every day, you do a weekly, monthly, and annual review of your habits. And this doesn't have to be an intensive thing whatsoever. It's literally just a minute or two every week or every month, just thinking about the habits that you've been performing, how you've been performing with them, and if there's any new habits you need to add or if you need to get rid of any of the current habits. And if you've been consistently missing a habit, say you've been aiming for five characters a day, but you've only been hitting two or three, then why? Is it worth lowering the habit or is it worth tweaking your lifestyle or sacrificing something else so you can put more time into this habit? Or perhaps you've immersed so well, you've done like 500 hours of immersion over six months and you've actually started to comprehend stuff really well, maybe you need to start investing some time and money into regular chats with native speakers on italki. Or maybe you've been overperforming on a certain habit. So for example, you set yourself an hour per day of immersion, but actually you've been hitting like 90 minutes or two hours pretty much every day. Maybe it's time to increase that goal or make it more intensive. So you actually focus more and create more flashcards during that immersion time instead of making it more of a passive activity. And of course, you're not just reviewing your habits during these reviews, you're also looking at your life and how much free time you have, what's going on right now. Is something freed up or has something happened that has led to less time? Maybe you need to tweak your habits because of that. So that about wraps up the basics of habit building regarding acquiring Chinese and making it addictive and automatic in your life. But if you want to actually really excel at this language, then you not only need to learn how to show up, but you also have to have the best approach. Now, if you wanna get the best approach, I made a full guide which you can watch right here.